with Ryan Shumpert, BrentHubsVolQuest.com. Going around the horn as Tennessee goes to Missouri, gets the sweep that they needed. Get a little help on the weekend from the rest of the SEC. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. But, Ryan, let's talk about Tennessee's sweep over Missouri. I have a sneaky suspicion Tony Vitello thought Friday night was going to be tough because when he referenced in his press conference before they left for Columbia, he, he talked about focusing only on Friday. Tennessee wasn't very good on Friday, but they found a way and, and then dominated the rest of the weekend. Exactly, that's exactly right. And Vitello had a huge emphasis on that Friday game. And you saw Tennessee come out and made about four or five outs on the base pass. Went, I think, two of 14 with, had to play with runners in scoring position. So a lot of not great things from Tennessee on Friday night. But at the same time, Tennessee's offense continuously kept the pressure on Missouri. Every single inning, long, long at bat. I think there was a Four inning stretch in there where Tennessee didn't have, or a three inning stretch where Tennessee didn't have an at bat less than five pitches. So they kept the pressure on, and you could tell Missouri's game plan was they were going all out to win on Friday. Threw obviously their best starter on Friday night, wrote him 109 pitches. Then went immediately to their two best relievers, both those guys threw over 50 pitches. And then Tennessee takes the lead with the big Max Ferguson homer and then doesn't look back as Sean Hundley shuts the door in the eighth and ninth inning. And what was, you know, Missouri's not a great lineup by any means, but a really good weekend from Tennessee's bullpen and you saw Tennessee despite not playing their best and despite trailing for basically the whole game Friday you got the feeling that Tennessee players really never felt like they were going to lose that game and when their opportunity came they took advantage they finally got the big hit and uh, they didn't look back after that yeah you know it was you're sitting there watching that game and you're thinking if Tennessee can find a way to win this one they may cruise the rest of the weekend because Missouri was going to be out of pitching and that showed up on, on Saturday and Sunday as content, Tennessee continued to put runs on the, on the board. The thing that stands out to me about Tennessee is the extra base hits that they had this weekend. It wasn't all about the home runs, but a lot of extra base hits, um, you know, once they got kind of going after the Friday night deal, it, it was kind of one, kind of through the lineup. Everybody seemed to find their way to, the, to, to a double, it seemed like. I mean, what do you make of Tennessee? And we've talked about the home runs. What do you make of this? kind of development of their offense over the last three or four weeks I know the weather's been a little bit warmer but that is it all about warmer weather or is it really just about guys kind of settling into who they are what do you make of their offensive growth the last few weeks I think it's mostly guys just settling into who you are because it's mainly the guys that we thought were going to be really good before the season or were really good at the beginning of the season Max Ferguson's the number one example of that preseason all-american Hadn't been very good until about two weeks ago. He was fantastic this weekend, 7 of 11 at the plate, three walks, two home runs. And then Drew Gilbert's kind of the other guy I alluded to who was red hot at the beginning of the season and then cooled off significantly. Went from hitting 320 to hitting, I think, at one time all the way down to about 235 in SEC play. And then he had a really good weekend, 9 of 15. You mentioned the doubles. He had five of them this weekend. And I think the you look specifically at the doubles this week. I think some of that's just a product of it's kind of a uh, pitcher-friendly park, hard to hit home runs there. So I think you saw more doubles than uh, on a couple balls. It might have been home runs typically. But overall, I think it's, a, you know, the warmer weather definitely goes into it. But you're seeing Tennessee just top to bottom. Everyone seems to be hitting the ball pretty well right now. Now you may have an off game or something like that. But one through nine, Tennessee is hitting the ball hard. And Tennessee has hitters one through nine that have power, and especially extra base hit power. Not everybody's going to go out there and hit 10 home runs on the season but guys that uh, can drive in for extra bases and run well so you're really seeing Tennessee's lineup all together guys come in and hit well and I think the challenge is can you continue that against higher level of competition the last three weeks when they've really broken out is against teams that aren't great Kentucky's obviously pretty solid but Texas A&M and Missouri aren't great don't have a ton of pitching depth and you've seen Tennessee pounce on teams once they got down to the bottom of their bullpen the last few weekends. It's not going to be quite like that against Arkansas and South Carolina. It's going to be important for them to keep up the consistency while the level, level of competition goes up. One thing we know, they're going to work whatever pitchers out there. They're not, they're not going to come up there and take three acts and, and go to the house. We know that about that this team. That, that's who they are. This question for you, bigger, bigger development, bigger key, bigger story for Tennessee this weekend. Hunley and the bullpen closing the door the way they did or the fact that Tidwell went seven on Sunday and, and appeared to have pretty good command all day long? I think it's both really big stories. I would maybe give the edge just to Tidwell, which is, it feels weird to say this because obviously they're facing the same Missouri lineup, but the bullpen being really good, we've seen the bullpen be good against lesser level teams, against 
and I know this is going to sound really mean to Missouri, but not SEC level teams, teams that aren't, aren't great. You know, when Tennessee's facing hitters aren't as good as them, they're fine. They throw strikes, their bullpen gets outs. It's when they face the top level hitting when they kind of run into some troubles. Tidwell has top level stuff. So it's for him, it's about being consistent, putting it together, you know, five, six innings at a time when runners get on, not letting that bother him. And he was really, really excellent on Sunday, seven innings pitch. I think the First time he'd gone over 100 pitches since that LSU series, the second start of SEC play, he did it in both of his first two starts. So you're kind of seeing him get more comfortable, return to form. And like I've said plenty of times, I think he is really, really important for this Tennessee team because of how high his ceiling is and what it means for this Tennessee team and what it means for this Tennessee bullpen when they have two starting pitchers that can consistently go deep into games and be effective. Because when Tidwell does that, he joins Chad Dallas, who's been Really, really exceptional. Every series in SEC play besides the Alabama series, he's been able to go deep into games. All right, let's talk about the, the rest of the SEC. Tennessee is in first place in the East in the wins column, tied with Vanderbilt in the loss column. Vanderbilt does not have to complete the three-game series because they're uh, postponed on Sunday due to weather against Alabama. What does that mean for Tennessee? What was good about this weekend around the SEC for the Volunteers as you go and look down these final two weekends of play that's coming up with Arkansas coming to town in a huge series and then a trip to South Carolina to close it out? I think that Vanderbilt news is massive big news for Tennessee because I mean, Vanderbilt could have lost that game to Alabama today. I'm not saying it's impossible for them to have done that, but I think Vanderbilt wins and even if they do lose they're sitting even with Tennessee or excuse me a game behind Tennessee in the standings and let's say they make that up in Tennessee and Vanderbilt were to end the series or in the season tied Vanderbilt has a tiebreaker so I think it's not a huge it's a huge win for Tennessee to have it you know a half a game behind a half a game ahead like that the rest of the way I guess is what I'm trying to say so I think that's a big win for Tennessee to only I guess negative of that is if Florida remains hot in Florida was able to tie Tennessee and Vanderbilt atop the standings. I think that would have played to Tennessee's advantage, as I talked about on the podcast on Friday. But overall, I think that's a, a very good thing for Tennessee. Kentucky was able to get a win over Florida this weekend, almost got two wins over Florida, which is the strike away from getting the series win uh, on Friday night, but gives Tennessee a two-game lead over them. And then you look, Georgia was able to get a win over Arkansas to put them down a, a game, and Tennessee's going to be tied with Arkansas at the top of the SEC, and Mississippi State could be in there during extra innings with South Carolina right now as we uh, record this. If they win that, they'll also be tied atop the SEC standing. So it just sets up uh, really for what's going to be a massive, massive series next weekend uh, in Lindsey Nelson Stadium. We got kind of round one of the Tony Vitello reunion against his uh, former team and place where he was a longtime assistant. This weekend, we'll get part two of it next weekend when he uh, – faces off against uh, Dave Van Horn, his old boss, and a really, really good Arkansas team and what is probably the best lineup in the country that Arkansas has. It should make for some exciting baseball at Lindsey Nelson Stadium. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting, Ryan, because, I mean, everybody pointed that Vanderbilt series, Vanderbilt series, Vanderbilt series. This one is just as big, if not bigger, when you talk about Arkansas coming to town. It's not the one anybody had earmarked necessarily at the start of the year because – Quite frankly, it's, you know, it's not Vanderbilt, the, the rival, but this is a huge game. Should be a great crowd, an electric atmosphere. Pretty, pretty fun to see where Tennessee's at with two weeks to go, isn't it? It really is. I mean, it's crazy. You kind of, I mentioned it on here, I think after the Florida series, and I thought how crazy it was that Tennessee was the top of the SEC standings four weeks in, and here we are eight weeks in, and they still have it, and they have everything out in front of them. Two hard series, but Tennessee has everything to play for and has as good a chance as anybody to win an SEC championship for the first time since 1995 for this Tennessee program. So incredible uh, for just what Tennessee's done this year, even not if they win, not don't win the SEC, the host regional incredible step in the right direction shows how much this program has grown. But to be able to be right at the top of such an elite conference as the SEC is in baseball, it's uh, truly remarkable to see what Tony Vitello has done in his four seasons in Knoxville. And they go to Missouri in a series that they need to get a sweep. It was not pretty on Friday night, but they get to sweep. They get a sweep without their starting catcher in the lineup. And Tony Vitello's team um, continues to do what Tony Vitello wants them to do. They're just tough and find ways. So it's going to be fun to watch and see what happens here over the course of the next two weeks. Of course, we're going to cover it all for you. Got the 3 2 1 coming up tomorrow, and then we'll get you ready for the series coming up later in the week. That's going to do it for this edition of Around the Horn. He's Ryan Shumpert. I'm Brent Hubbs. Have a great rest of your Mother's Day, everybody.